hey everybody welcome back to the podcast my view on the view where i make the views table relatable i take the table dynamics and i relate those to our every day lives. We got another update on Whoopi. She's been spotted out for the first time since her suspension. So come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Well, we're back rocking and rolling y'all. Welcome everybody. Hope y'all are doing good. Shout out to all the new subscribers over there on YouTube. There are hundreds of you guys. Hundreds. I'm like, goodness gracious. I get the new, you know, we get these notifications from YouTube about how many people are are subscribing and this and that and the third. And I was like, goodness gracious, this is, this is beautiful. So thank you guys so much for making that commitment to actually subscribe to the YouTube channel. So shout out to all of you guys, Uh, shout out to all the new followers over there on Spotify, Apple, and all those other podcasting platforms. I appreciate all of you guys. I want to say a special thank you to all of you who always remember to let me know that you enjoy our time together by giving me a thumbs up. I sometimes forget to say that. I'm trying to remember to say it more along with subscribe and follow and rate since the podcast is so many places now. But because I didn't do that for years, I sometimes just forget. (laughs) So I appreciate those of you don't forget. So let's do the update. Well, guys, first thing I want to tell you, and I got to look down at my notes here, Whoopi has been spotted out in public for the first time since her suspension. Now, what was so interesting about this, and hold on guys, let me get on another screen because I wanna make sure I say this properly because I was just like, I don't know what all this stuff was on the jacket because a lot of people are focusing on the jacket she wore. The picture you saw in the thumbnail, you can actually just screenshot that and enlarge it for yourself if you want to because the thumbnails are pretty small, but that's the jacket and the writing on the jacket that people are um, actually uh, referring to. So let's just say this. Remember, she was suspended from ABC on Tuesday night, February 2nd. Well, the next morning, mm -hmm, February 3rd, (laughs) Daily Mail caught her out and she was smiling. She looked happy. She looked like nothing had happened. And she was on her way to the film center in New York City for a script reading. So, and she didn't have her cane this time. So many of you may not have known that Whoopi walks with a cane, you know, from time to time because of her sciatica issue, but she didn't have her cane. Uh, She was holding a bunch of stuff. She was doing fine. And what was so interesting is that she had this jacket on and on the back of the jacket, it says, it said innocent. It said a whole bunch of stuff, but the biggest word that people could see was the word innocence. And um, I will tell you guys, for those of you who didn't understand why I kept saying, in my opinion, Whoopi's apology um, had a note of arrogance to it each time she did it. For me, this jacket um, is once again, in my view on the view, her flouting or giving the middle finger to people. It's another sign of arrogance. Um, We all remember the famous or the infamous, I don't care, do you? I really don't care, do you, jacket that Melania Trump war on her way to go see children, you know, who were, you know, um, separated from their parents. And you say, well, that's not the same thing. I'm talking about the principle here. So I need you to stay with me. Okay. Don't be trying to find something to disagree with. I'm not saying that it's the same thing. I'm talking about the principle when people have done something wrong and then they apologize. Right. And then, but then they go on right after that apology. And then they do things subtle, Uh, you know, uh, passive aggressive things to kind of say, screw you, you know, kind of, you know, I don't, I don't know why she would do this. Um, (laughs) I know she can't speak to the media or she's choosing, I should say, not to speak to the media. Her friends allegedly, or people who are closer are the ones uh, doing these leaks saying she's livid and this, that, and the third. But I don't think this was a good move. Do you guys think it was? I don't think it was a good move to, to, to wear a jacket that says innocence. And I don't think also another word, a phrase on this jacket was, we are all infinite. Okay. So, and a whole lot of other things. Okay. So I'm not sure why she would think with all that's going on, um, even after her second apology on the show, having the uh, Jonathan Greenblatt, the president of the Anti-Defamation League on the show, them having that educational conversation, um, everyone, you know, 
and then you being suspended why you would think it was a good idea to go out and wear a jacket the very next day, the very next day after his appearance, the very next day after you were suspended and have on a jacket that says innocence. See, it still tells you what her attitude is. You see, you know, again, you don't have to agree with me. I'm just pointing out the way I see it. My view on the view, this woman, although I, I definitely do love her. And I know some of you, it doesn't sound that way uh, because you're rocking and rolling me with me while I have to happen to be doing a lot of critiques of her behavior. You haven't been with me on all the podcasts where I've been celebrating Whoopi and uh, sharing stories where others celebrated her like uh, Jennifer Lewis. You haven't seen those podcasts. Um, so it, I can understand why if you're just here for this, you think, oh my God, this woman hates this, her, her, this woman. No, I I don't. I just try to be fair. I talk about the positive things, um, but I don't let the fact that I do like Whoopi and have a certain amount of respect for her cause me not to see her flaws. Okay. So I don't know what, who told her this was a good idea. You know, it definitely says, I still think what I think. Screw all of y'all. Screw the suspension. I'm innocent. You know, all that kind of thing. I don't know. So you guys let me know if you're listening where you can make a comment what you thought about the jacket. So guys, the next update we got from the Daily Mail is about Whoopi's salary and also about the fact that um, she's going to be missing a big chunk of her money because we found out from them she was suspended without pay. Um, all right. So according to the Daily Mail, they have learned that Whoopi's contract pays her five, with the view pays her five million dollars per year. Now, everybody keep in mind, that doesn't mean she gets $5 million. Because remember, there are taxes. And if you've been a lover of this show, the way most of us in this community have, one of the main things we've always heard Whoopi Goldberg complain about is taxes. Them, the government taking her money, taking her taxes. She, I mean, she, especially when um, Andrew... Um, um, Oh my gosh, was it Yang? Andrew Yang was running for president. And, you know, he um, was kind of pivoting off of Martin Luther King Jr.'s idea of the poor people's campaign where uh, every uh, family got would get a certain amount of money, like a stipend per month or something like that. And so he, I forgot what he called it. Some of you guys can re uh, refresh my memory in the comments. But anyway, but that's where that idea originally started um, in the 1960s. And so they would st they started that um, in the, the North, in Chicago. At least that was the idea they were working on, the Poor People's Campaign, to get that started. So I will just tell you that she, she definitely isn't getting $5 million. And according to the Daily Mail, a source told them that for those two weeks, she will not, she will miss out on $192,000, which means <laughs> if you don't write that up by two, this woman is making $96,000 a week. Y'all, wouldn't it be lovely? <laughs> now we know that doesn't include all the taxes. So we don't know after, you know, you know what it actually would be, but you know, just going by these numbers, you know, just pre-tax is like, whoa, <laughs> I wish I was making 96,000 a week, not a year, a week. What, what kind of life? I mean, my man, I'd be on, on, I'd be out in the Mediterranean somewhere. Right. With my man child having fun. Okay. So, yeah. So I will just tell you guys, um, this is interesting. This is very interesting, isn't it? Um, because for a long time, you know, people have wondered about the, the details of Whoopi's contract. Um, I will tell you guys, those of you who don't know, um, we learned in September of 2021. So just a few months back that Whoopi had signed a new renewal contract with ABC or Walt Disney and that it was for four years. Her renewal was four years. We know Joy's contract comes to an end uh, in August of 2022. So this summer in a few months, because y'all know August will be here before you know it. Time is flying by like nobody's business. Um, so anyway, so that was the next part. The other thing I want to share with you guys that we got in this update was this. The Daily Mail talked to some of the staffers, staffers there at the show uh, after her suspension. And this is what they say the staffers told them. Quote, staffers welcomed the suspension and said it finally brings an end to Whoopi and her co-host Joy Behar doing, quote, whatever they want to do. A problem the two women have had since Barbara Walters left the show. Also, uh, the person went on to tell them that ABC understands that this is an opinion based show. The facts will always be paramount. But we want robust discussion, but can't have the host saying things that are false and not based in fact. What Whoopi said was not based in fact and was highly inflammatory and offensive. 
Also, guys, the staffers went on to tell the Daily Mail, quote, it's a new day at ABC News. Kim wants her entire team to be held accountable for their words and their actions. Uh, there have been a real there has been a real power vacuum on the view since Bar- Barbara Walters retired because she ran the show with an iron fist. Close quote. Now, for those of us who read Ramin Satuta's book, Ladies Who Punch, which was a New York Times bestseller, we learned that from him. Remember, he interviewed over 150 people for that uh, book, and uh, he interviewed all of the hosts of The View, except Whoopi and Elizabeth Hasselbeck, because those were the only two who refused to talk to him. But what we learned was that Barbara did indeed run this show with an iron fist. Certain things she wouldn't allow. She required them to do the uh, nightly and daily research. Um, She didn't let them off the hook with that. But we're learning now from these staffers that since she's been gone, um, in particular, Whoopi and Joy have just been able to do whatever they want. And I will say this. A lot of you have heard me talk about how, if you've been with me for years, how I used to hear that... um, behind the scenes that Whoopi rarely participated in the morning meetings. Now, for those of you who don't know, we learned years ago that every morning, this was started actually by Barbara Walters, um, every morning the women meet for a morning meeting. And in the morning meeting, that's their time to actually, they've already decided the night before exactly what topics they're going to cover. They're supposed to already be prepared. The purpose of the morning meeting is for them all to tell each other what they think about the topics and hash out, get all of the, um, what did Sunny say? Um, if you, if you're really, really passionate and you got a lot of stuff to say, get it all out in the morning meeting so that when you come to the table, Sonny said, you can present your opinion and your viewpoint in a little bit more, um, she didn't use the word classy way, but basically in a more calm way, because you, you've gotten all those emotions and that energy off of you in the morning meeting. But what I will tell you guys is this, you know, I don't know if Whoopi is still participating in the morning meetings, but I used to hear that she rarely did because, you know, and I don't know why. I I mean, I just assumed she didn't think she had to. And again, that goes to her not being prepared for the shows. But I'm going to tell you something that I'm highly suspicious of. And this is just my suspicion. I'm letting you know I have no proof of this. I have absolutely no proof. I suspect that Monday, February 1st, excuse me, January 31st, when she actually said this on the show, that she didn't, she didn't participate in the morning meeting that day, because if she had, I'm going to assume she would have said what she said on live air. And they all would have said, Oh no, because Brian Tedda, the executive producer and some of the other staff members, they participate in the morning meeting. They would have said, no, 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 you don't say that. Now you can say it in the morning meeting. If you want to, again, you have the right to your personal opinion about the Holocaust, but they would have let her know, girl, that is not going to be the thing to say. Cause sometimes we think We should say everything we think and we don't think about, wait a minute, maybe that particular opinion is reserved for my husband or my wife or my best friend or my sisters or whatever. But this show is broadcast to the world and it's live. So there's no editing anything out. It's not a pre tape show where you could say something and they can go back and edit it out and then present a final polished copy to the world. It doesn't work that way. So I highly suspect that one of the other reasons they may have suspended her is because had she participated in the morning meeting, she would have said that and they would have corrected her and she wouldn't have made the blunder on the air and she would have saved herself, the network, the ladies, a hell of a lot of anguish, uh, anxiety, um, you know, the whole dark cloud that's now over the whole network because of what she said. Um, She would have saved all of them, just lots of trouble, just by participating in the morning meeting. So anyway, so the next thing we learned from this, um, this leak is this guys, it says here, the, another insider told them Kim Godwin is drawing a line in the sand for all staff across ABC news. And she is attempting to build a corporate culture based on truth, facts, accountability, and kindness. The person goes on to say, if you do not operate within this prism, Kim will take action. Whoopi suspension highlights this. Uh, They go on to say Disney is aware that there are huge cultural issues within ABC News and Kim has the backing of all the executives and the board to fix up the news division and set it on its right course. So the bottom line for me is that 
I really think that, as I said to you guys before, this is sending a message, not just to Whoopi, but to everybody. Yes, this is an opinion show. Yes, um, we want you to come here and be passionate and, 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 and tell the world what you think, but you need to research out or follow the research that the research team gives you, thereby preparing for the shows properly so that you won't get out here and say something that is not well-informed. As I said before, all of our opinions need to be well-informed. One of the reasons why as a vlogger about The View, I spend most, most of my time researching, like the days y'all don't see me online, that's because I have to split my time up between my job, my family life, and all of this. I spend most of my hours researching, listening to the women when they're on various podcasts, watching them when they're doing some of these virtual events, you know, trying to find out how much the tickets are so that when I come speak to you, I can bring together various things I've heard them say. And so that anyone who's listening to my podcast will know I don't clickbait you. I don't try to, um, you know, um, I don't bring a lot of bull. You know, I try to have a well-informed opinion, okay? That doesn't mean my opinion is right. It just means I try to be well-informed. Um, like we talked about Anna and, and all these things, the lawsuit going on with Anna, trying to bring you updates and, and things like that. So for me, as I end our time together, this update says a lot to me. We finally got to learn about the money situation, <laughs> but also I'm not, like I said, I, I'm not sure what her decision really was in, in regards to the jacket, you know, because remember she was highly critical and rightly so of Melania Trump when she wore that jacket, you know, after her husband had come out and she was standing right there beside him saying they love the kids, you know, they're going to do all they can for the kids you know, and that they would never do this and that. And then the next day you go and get on a plane with a jacket that says, I really don't care to you going to see the very kids you claim that, you know, you wanted to protect and help. So I don't know what this is about, except for me, I can only interpret as a big middle finger. Um, now I want to say this too. I forgot this part, guys. Sorry, looking at my notes here. Um, remember we learned that, um, Sonny and Joy and Anna were angry, uh, according to some of the insiders uh, who spoke to the Daily Beast the other day about uh, Whoopi suspension. Well, one of the things the Daily Mail mentioned in this latest update um, was that, yes, someone told them as well that Sonny and Joy and Anna were upset. But you know what I want to say about this? Um, specifically about Sonny, in my view on The View, Sonny needs to be quiet here. She needs to be quiet here. This is not her fight. I remember, and I know most of you who love the show and watch it will remember this too. Do you remember uh, in 2020 when the information came out that Barbara Fredita um, had said a lot of derogatory statements about many of the black talent there at ABC? Y'all remember that? Those of you who don't know about that story, I'm going to have to let you go research it, okay? I don't have time to bring you up to speed. Um, but remember on air when we found out what she said about Sonny? And so ABC they gave Sonny an opportunity to address it live on air. Who was sitting right there and said to Sonny and to the world, well, I don't think she's racist. And if you'll remember the look on Sonny's face when Whoopi did not show support to her, Whoopi has had a problem for years pandering to certain people. A lot of people suspect that along with her hard work, yes, that that's why she has gotten as far as she has is because she's pandered to certain people. So I think Sunny needs to uh, read the room. When you were in the midst of your racism um, battle over there with ABC, it came out well for Sunny, which is wonderful because most of us who've been in battles with these companies that have these strong systemic racial structures, we don't come out successful. We wind up having to leave our jobs, leave because we, you know, you know, it's just so bad. The other, the other, only other black woman who's sitting there on the panel didn't have your back. She knew that woman was, was racist, but she didn't want to say it because she didn't want to mess up her goody, 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 goody thing over there. So she said live on air. Now, I don't think she's racist, even though <laughs> she knew what the woman said. It's like, okay, those are not words that someone who's not racist says, but see, Whoopi was thinking about her own career there at ABC. So when I hear that Sonny is upset, I'm like, Sonny, honey, you need to be quiet. Okay. You need to be quiet. 
This ain't your fight. Let Whoopi do- let her fight this one on her own. And I understand the concept because we've talked about it before of being supportive of your coworkers, especially when you're friends with them, especially when, you know, a show like this, you have chemistry, you have um, a lot of compatibility and you really need to have that family feel because what you do is, uh, you know, you're sharing your intimate thoughts about a lot of these uh, situations and topics, but you also need to be wise. There's also wisdom and you have to know, I can, my support for this person is only going to go this far, especially when you've seen in the heat of your own battle, she was not there for you. Matter of fact, you know, said to the world, I don't support you when she said she didn't believe Barbara Fredita was a racist. Okay. Um, in regards to Anna, you know, I think that Anna, you know, Anna hasn't had that we know of any real battles at the network. Um, We do know about the situations that went on with her and Meghan McCain, in which, of course, all of the women, all of them were supportive of Anna because, you know, Meghan was really, really bad. You know, by all accounts, she was really, really bad. Her behavior, I mean, not, you know, I mean her behavior, guys. I'm talking about that. Her behavior behind the scenes was really, really bad um, to Anna. And we learned through the Daily Mail that when they were thinking of bringing Anna on permanently as a part-time host and giving her a full co- a contract for that, that uh, Megan McCain had threatened in 2018 that she would leave the show if they brought her on. Um, and so they all had Anna's back. So I can understand that when everyone's had your back, you're going to have theirs. Okay. And we know that Joy and Whoopi have been together for a long time, but see, don't forget Joy's contract is coming to an end in just a few months and she's supposed to retire. So, you know, kind of like she doesn't have anything to lose per se. You know, Joy is 79 years old, although she doesn't look it. She has a very youthful spirit. Um, She laughs all the time, which is one of the things I love about Joy. She always seems to have a smile on her face. She always, um, she just seems to be a a woman who's very well-rounded in my opinion. So I can understand her coming to Whoopi's defense. But if I were Sunny and if I were Sunny's friend, I would tell her exactly what I've said to you. Don't forget Don't forget in your heat, she wasn't there and she made it public. She wasn't there for you. Now, you know, I understand that certain people, because of certain ways they grew up, need people's approval, want people's approval, et cetera, et cetera. Um, But to me, all of us need to be wise and we need to know when to step in to support a friend and when to say, all right, this wouldn't be the time for me to step in. Um, You say, well, that's what Sarah Haynes is doing. No, you can't apply this to Sarah. Um, We've got too many instances where Sarah didn't stand up for nobody. Okay. So yeah, nobody ain't standing up for Sarah. All right. And, and I know a lot of people don't understand workplace dynamics. They say, you know, well, in regards to Sarah, they say, well, you know, she's just thinking about her family. Nobody says she shouldn't be thinking about her family, y'all. Nobody said that. We understand what she's doing. We've talked about it for years. We're just saying that when you, you choose to not ever support anybody, you're, you know, there's, there, there comes, um, there's a result of that. The result in the workplace is people don't want you around when it's time to hang out and, 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 and fun. They just don't. And so people don't understand how workplace dynamics work, you know, tend to be like a Sarah. They think, well, why is everyone leaving me out? You know, I got my kids, I got my house. I just bought, you know, can't they understand? Yeah, they do understand that. But in the workplace, remember, the workplace is like a family in a lot of ways, especially this group of women, because the group is so small. And so they have to band together, you know, to yes, step to the network and say, we want change, as they did in the case of Meghan McCain or other things. But when you have this one person who will never, ever um, speak out for what's right, we're not talking about speaking up for what's wrong, but for what's right. She's going to get the benefit of it when they all go and and say, you know, she didn't she didn't care for Megan any more than anybody else did. I know what she says to the media, but I can promise you the leaks we've gotten over the years. No, she doesn't. You know, Megan was very difficult for Sarah to deal with. And so she got the benefit of that girl getting out the door, but she wasn't a part of the staff who went and said we, we can't work with her anymore. She wasn't willing to share honestly with Mrs. Kim and say she's she is difficult. She's a difficult co-worker. She wasn't willing to do that. She just stayed quiet and then reaped the benefits. People notice that kind of stuff in the workplace. And so I think those of you like me who are still uh, in, in, in our working years and we have to work with different people in the workplace, you have to understand, so do I, workplace dynamics. 
And however you choose, however I choose to be in the workplace, we have to understand what the results of that will be. And either we're going to have to be okay with it or we're not. See, she's not okay. We've learned from the leaks of being left out. So she says she's not okay with the results of the decisions she's made. She's decided to stay in her lane, play it safe, always be in the middle, middle or 99.9% of the time be in the middle, you know, this, that, and the third. Okay, that's fine. You have a right to do that. But you also then need to be willing to accept the results of the dynamic that creates in the workplace. And that's the part I think um, a lot of people don't understand. So thanks so much, guys. This is My View on The View, a podcast all about ABC's The View, where I make The View's table relatable. I'll talk to you later. Oh.